We have just learned that Governor Ned Lamont will get his first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine this morning in Bloomfield. In the meantime, though, there are new developments surrounding COVID-19 in our state. For more on that, we're sending things over to Fox 61's Keith McGill. Maureen, Keith, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Our vaccine team on it this morning. Another new variant has been reported in our state. The strain of the novel coronavirus that originated in South Africa has been reported here in Connecticut with a patient now being treated over the state line in New York. Joining us live with more insight on this this morning, Trinity Health's Dr. Saeed Hussein. Good morning, doctor. We so appreciate your being with us today. Morning. Thank you for having me. I want to jump right in because we hear a lot about these different variants. Folks at home can be confused as to kind of where things stand, what that means. What is the difference between the variant we've seen in the UK and the one we're talking about now in South Africa? So yeah, so there are two things that I want folks to remember related to these variants. One is how contagious is the particular variant, which means how transmissible is it from one person to the next? And the other thing is virulence, which means if someone does end up with COVID-19 disease from one of these variants, how likely is it that they will end up with severe disease or even death? So with the UK variant, we know it's become the dominant strain since it emerged in a late fall of 2020. In the UK, it's now the dominant strain. And it's led to a really, it has a very high transmission rate we know that. We also have new data coming in that shows it may actually be more lethal. Now, what we do know about the South African variant, again, is also similar to the UK variant. It's more transmissible. It's the dominant strain in South Africa currently. What's worrisome, which is different from the UK strain, however, is that there are two new mutations found in the South African variant, which may mean reduced efficacy against antibodies and indeed vaccines. Certainly a lot to keep your eye on there. That was going to be my next question. I want to share a question from a viewer, Sharon, writing into us, wanting to know um, once you've been vaccinated for the coronavirus, is she tr still transmissible? Can she still give it to somebody else? So we don't really have adequate data yet to answer that question definitively. That's why it's really important that we stick to public health measures, including masking, distancing, and avoiding gatherings even after uh, an individual has been vaccinated. Now, what we do know, based on data currently available, how, how effective are these vaccines, the ones that are currently licensed, against these variants? We know, based on data, that the UK variant uh, will, uh, the vaccines, I should say, are effective against the UK variant. Where there's some gray, gray area based on data that we've received from Novavax uh, phase two, phase three trials, as well as the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine that currently is going through the FDA EUA approval process, is they are less effective against the South African variant. Bottom line here for Connecticut residents is we've done this before. We've kept the virus very, very low throughout the summer of last year. We can do it again. This is not the time to, to let your guard down. It's time to double up on, on these uh, public health measures that we know. And when it's your turn to roll up your sleeve, please get vaccinated. Doctor, another quick question from Bernie, a viewer writing in saying, hey, we've seen all this weather. Weather is an issue today. Vaccine appointments are being canceled. What happens if the rescheduling window kind of extends beyond that recommended window in between shots? Does the, will the vaccine still work for someone like Bernie? Yeah, so that's a good question. So the CDC has come out with um, re new recommendations uh, a couple weeks ago, which basically states that the, the, the time difference between the vac first dose and second dose can be extended up to six weeks only in exceptional circumstances. So it's three weeks for Pfizer, four weeks for Moderna. Uh, the best thing is for folks, when they come for their first dose appointment and they've received the vaccine, please make your second dose appointment before you leave the clinic. In the event that there is inclement weather or you're unable to make your second dose appointment, please reschedule as soon as possible to the closest date to that three-week period if it's Pfizer, four-week period if it's Moderna. Dr. Saeed Hussein with Trinity Health, thank you for your time.